Well, it's really a pleasure to be here today. Um, and I'm going to switch gears a little bit uh, and give an industry perspective on how precision medicine can be applied to this new emerging and exciting area of immuno-oncology. And specifically, talk a little bit about how genomics and computational methods uh, can be used to really drive innovation in this area. So this is a tremendously exciting time uh, for precision medicine and uh, for therapy and cancer. This really is the moonshot uh, of our times. Um, and the point I want to make is that precision medicine is already happening in cancer, uh, in, in specific areas of treatment. An example of this is in targeted therapy diagnostics, uh, where personalists and other companies are sequencing tumors, uh, identifying specific somatic mutations, that can then guide the choice of specific targeted therapies. Um, and this is tremendously helpful, proving to be tremendously helpful for patients and also for the physicians. And these are tests that actually can be ordered today. But there's a whole new area of uh, cancer treatment that uh, pr is proving to be transformational, and that's in immuno-oncology and immunotherapies that actually harness um, and augment our own immune system to fight cancer. And so you've probably heard of Jimmy Carter uh, being diagnosed with uh, metastatic melanoma uh, and uh, given several months to live, and this was just last year. He received one of these immunotherapies and uh, you know, was declared disease-free and continues to be disease-free uh, today. Um, and this is for a cancer that has really defied any sort of uh, kind of um, meaningful treatment over the you know, past three or four decades. So this is very transformational and very, very exciting. And so it's not surprising that this whole area of immunotherapy is just exploding. So we've talked ab uh, about immune checkpoints. This is what Jimmy Carter got. There are other immune modulators that are now being looked at. There are th this next generation of cancer vaccines, adoptive T-cell therapies. This is all tremendously exciting. Um, and, and some of these therapies are quite uh, effective. But the fact remains, as with any therapy, that there are going to be some people that respond and some people that don't. And so as these therapies proliferate, it becomes more and more important to know which of these therapies is actually going to work for my tumor or my patient. And so there's this growing need for precision medicine solutions in this new area of immunotherapy. And this is important not just for patients and the physicians who are trying to select the best therapy, but this is important for our society, where we have limited healthcare dollars and these medications are expensive. You know, several hundred, over $100,000 for some of these medications. If you use it in, in combination, you're talking about hundreds of thousands of dollars. So this is in actually incredibly important. So Personalis, as well as other companies, are starting to look into how can we develop precision medicine solutions to help guide immunotherapy. And now, so there's a lot to potentially talk about here. Given a limited time, I'm just going to pick two simple examples. Uh, and show sort of how we can uh, make a difference in this area. One in immune checkpoints and the other in, in personalized vaccines. So talking about checkpoint blockade, it turns out that uh, tumors uh, are eliminated by our immune system with active surveillance, but eventually they escape the immune system. And we didn't really know what caused this until more recently, um, where we've discovered then that not we, but lots of good scientists um, out there, this, this, uh, discovered that checkpoint uh, genes um, can suppress the immune response in some of these cancers. So these tumors start expressing these checkpoint genes, um, and that essentially creates almost like a stealth shield for the tumor to evade the immune system. And so it's no surprise that these have become, these checkpoint genes have become the active um, uh, area of development for, for uh, new drug development, and these checkpoint blockades are now um, sort of the, uh, uh, these exciting new treatments that Jimmy Carter and others are starting to get. And so the responses can be dramatic, and this can lead to lasting remission in these cancers that are uh, traditionally difficult to treat, like melanoma. Um, but the objective response rates still range from kind of 10 to 30 percent. So the question is, again, how do we predict who's going to respond? So the first generation of these, uh, these attempts uh, have resulted in these very simple single gene expression tests. So looking at the expression of some of these checkpoint genes, um, and in this case, you can see that if this test is positive, you have a 26% per chance of responding to this checkpoint inhibitor called Tecentric. And if it's negative, you have a 10% chance of responding 
to um, this uh, medication. So these are coarse predictors at best and, and relatively underwhelming. So the question becomes, how do we actually build better predictors? Um, and this is what personalists and others are working on. The modulators of immune response are extremely complex and really go well beyond a single gene. Um, and it really raises the opportunity to use broader and more sophisticated genomics and computational methods to really drive this next generation of precision medicine solutions. So there are lots of different examples of how this could be done. There's uh, expression signatures, et cetera. I'm going to just talk about one simple example, and this is uh, new antigens. So it turns out that tumors have many mutations, and th these mutations can be determined through sequencing, comprehensive sequencing of the tumor. It turns out that some of these mutations lead to what we call neoantigens. And those new antigens are special because they're recognized as foreign by the immune system. And so you can imagine that the th as the theory goes, the more neoantigens you have, or that you can predict for a tumor, the more likely the immune system is going to respond and recognize the tumor as foreign. So it's not surprising that some initial studies have been done on this and shown that neoantigen burden uh, is a predictor of response to these checkpoint blockades. So this is an example of some, an emerging sort of um, uh, concept that could eventually turn into a precision uh, diagnostic that can guide therapy at the bedside. But the question is, how do you how do you get at these new antigens? How do you assess that? How do you predict those? And that's where the trick is. So it turns out that existing sequen sequencing-based diagnostics, diagnostics are too limited for new antigens. And they're limited in a number of different axes. First is that existing cancer diagnostic panels tend to be too, way too narrow, so 20 to 500 genes. When you look at these new antigens, you really need to look sort of genome-wide for these um, new antigens. There's lack of integration of RNA expression, which is, is extremely uh, important for assessing uh, neoantigens. You can miss neoantigens. A lot of the sequencing approaches leaves gaps in genes that actually will lead to missed neoantigens when you're looking for them. And this, this paucity of data then really leads to a very limited ability to predict neoantigens. And this is kind of the state of the art for diagnostics currently. So uh, at Personalis, we've developed the ACE Immuno ID platform for identifying new antigens. This is a good example of new platforms that are more, comp uh, more broader and more sophisticated that can actually help power this next generation of precision medicine uh, in immuno-oncology. And we've had to innovate in a number of different areas to do this. One is that we've patented this uh, ACE technology to achieve this clinical grade level of sequencing. And that sounds somewhat prosaic, but it's actually incredibly important. And we'll talk more about this later. Uh, we've also had to innovate on the assays and go well beyond the model of the traditional companion diagnostics where you're looking at sort of one gene or a few genes at a time, but really broaden that out to look at and interrogate thousands to 20, over in the, all the genes. Um, and this also involves integration of DNA and RNA uh, together, and that feeds into these um, algorithms that we've developed for new antigen identification. Uh, and the point here is that AC Immuno ID really allows, begins to allow the determ determination of things like new antigen burden and other biomarkers that actually could eventually correlate with immunotherapy response and serve as the basis for this next generation of precision uh, uh, diagnostics. The point I want to make is that that's the technology, um, and, but developing the technology in precision medicine is actually only half the battle. So, uh, and, and so validation and regulatory issues are key. If you're going to use these tests and at the bedside, you have to confront the validation and also the regulatory issues. And it becomes more complicated as, as, as the assays become more com complex. So strong analytic validation is required, but challenging in cancer um, because of the, the, need, uh, the lack of existing gold standards and metrics for assessing performance. You also have... Um, more complex assays in informatics for things like ACE Immuno ID, so that requires more sophisticated validation. Um, and then the FDA itself is still looking and figuring out how to regulate these more complex diagnostics. So our feeling as a company is that we need to get away from this wild west of genomics and actually this spending time and actually doing robust validation and addressing these issues is actually really, really important. And we're happy to see that some, some of the folks that are speaking at this conference co-authored this paper with the FDA to lay out a roadmap of how to regulate this space. Um, so one of the things that we've done to kind of address this is actually recognize the need for clinical-grade sequencing in informatics to support diagnostic use. 
So conventional sequencing, in short, this is an example of a gene, and the coverage in a gene when you do sequencing, some of you may be familiar with this, but you can see right away that there are gaps. And this is not uncommon for uh, medically important genes. Um, and so we recognized this early on and developed special technology that begins to fill in these gaps so that when you actually interrogate genes, you have confidence that you've, com you've, you've covered everything. And so you don't miss mutations or diagnosis or neoantigens. Um, and so this involves custom-developed developed targeted capture with additional uh, optimized biochemistry to address some of these issues. And so one way to look at this is if you look at the green, which is our uh, technology combined with standard uh, approaches of sequencing, you combine them together, you end up with a much stronger uh, data set. And so this is that same gene uh, with those gaps, but now filled in with our ACE um, approach. And this is tremendously important for, again, reaching this clinical grade level of sequencing. So we published this uh, in conjunction with folks in Genome in a Bottle and NIST um, last year in Genome uh, Medicine and showed that this kind of augment augmentation approach gets you to this high level of sensitivity and this really reaches this clinical um, grade sequencing um, bar that we'd like to establish. I just want to spend a moment and, and, and just say that strong analytical validation of the assays and the informatics for these precision medicine solutions is absolutely critical. And so I don't have time to go through all of this, but you can kind of see even just from the complexity of this slide, we've had to go and proactively generate gold standard data sets that really allow us to really measure the performance of our systems in sort of a diagnostic setting. And this is actually very, very important. So now that you have accurate clinical rate clinical grade comprehensive sequencing data, how do you predict and p identify potential new antigens? So we've developed a new antigen informatics pipeline and algorithms. Again, for, um, because of time, we can't go through all of this, but suffice it to say, it involves taking this data, and this is lots of data across entire genome, DNA and RNA, integrated together, um, where we call the mutations, but we also predict things like HLA, we d uh, predict the epitopes from that, and then that feeds into MHC binding prediction, um, and that leads to a new antigen prediction. So you can see this is a complex process and certainly not um, straightforward. And I just wanted to mention that new antigen prediction itself is a machine learning problem. We, we built our own neural networks to do this kind of prediction. In this case, you can see what we're trying to predict is whether a putative new antigen actually binds to an MHC complex, and we have to train our neural networks to do that. So, um, so I've spoken about new antigens in the context of precision medicine for checkpoint blockade medications, but there's a whole other application of this, which is in creating truly personalized cancer vaccines, and this is an ex extremely exciting area that we're starting to work with companies on. And the point, uh, the, 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 uh, the concept here is that you can identify the new antigens and then create a synthetic vaccine that's actually personalized for this particular tumor, and then provide that back to the patient in combination with these checkpoint blockers and all of a sudden you have a tumor-specific personalized vaccine for this patient. So incredibly exciting, um, don't have time to go through it. <laughs> um, so in summary, uh, Personalis and other companies are already working on precision diagnostics uh, solutions for cancer for targeted therapy, but there's this whole new area of immunotherapy that's Im immensely exciting and transformational, and there are opportunities for precision medicine in that uh, realm as well. We're working on predicting who will respond to checkpoint blockade and also these personalized cancer vaccines. And I just want to leave you with one last thought, um, which is that um, as these different therapeutic modalities proliferate, and if you fast forward here, you know, two, three, five years, you can see that we're entering a world where you just, uh, a, a given patient is going to have a multitude of therapeutic options in front of them. And so the, the question is, can we imagine a world where that patient can come in and get a single test that then lays out the entire sort of uh, uh, milieu of things that actually will, will attack that specific tumor for that specific patient? And so this concept of a universal diagnostic for cancer that cuts across targeted therapies, immunotherapy and cytotoxic therapies, is one of those um, uh, goals that we have at Personalis and we hope will become a reality. Thank you very much.